heavily expanded, and a lot of the items and magic powers that you could gain in this game did not feel as superfluous as they did in some other games. In terms of themes, the game does retain quite a bit from both of the original games. For example, the theme of exploration is still very strong, as it is with any Zelda game, but it is a tad downplayed in this one due to the fact that interaction is such a big theme in this game. I mean, the entire world is heavily populated with NPCs that you can talk to who will give you very direct hints on where you should go, what you should look for, and what secrets you can find in a given area. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to rag on the originals or anything, but let's face it, in the original Legend of Zelda, the feeling of isolation is very real and very present all the time. Yes, there were other people in there besides Link that you could talk to, but when you did find somebody who was willing to give you a hint, they were usually extraordinarily enigmatic, usually saying something like, walk into the waterfall, which didn't really give you a lot to go on. While the second game was better about this, there still wasn't a whole lot of interaction. At most, you would come across somebody in a town that had lost something precious to them. Then you would have to go out and find said item, and they would help you locate somebody who could teach you a spell. Or there was somebody who could heal your hit points or magic points in town. That was about the extent of the interaction in those games. Oh, and let's not forget about the guy who says, I am error. But in Link to the Past, the world is vastly populated with people who not only have interesting things to say, but also very interesting personalities. They're even friendly enough to the point where they will mark down on your map where you're supposed to go. Some of them even have text that implies that they have interesting accents, giving you the idea that this is a world that is vastly populated with very different people from very different regions. Actually, using the singular word world is probably not the best way to put it because there are actually two worlds, which is one of the game's main features. There is a light world, the world of Hyrule, the one that you start in, and the dark world, which used to be the Golden Land before Ganon took it over using the Triforce. Now, the Dark World is shown to be a mirror image of the Light World, with many important buildings being in the exact same place as they would be in the Hyrule Castle. For this reason, it becomes imperative that you move between the two different worlds to solve puzzles and reach certain places that you couldn't reach before. This idea of light and dark is something that has been explored in countless games before and since A Link to the Past, but here it's pulled off very, very well. What's important to remember is that the Dark World was not always dark. It was a golden land, a promised land akin to, say, heaven, before Ganon came and claimed the Triforce. The idea that such an evil man could use such a powerful object is something that wasn't really explored up until this point. The Triforce could be a force for good or for evil depending on who gets a hold of it. Conversely, Link having to utilize both the dark and light world in and of itself is a pretty interesting concept, and shows that dark and light are not so much pure good and pure evil, but rather more an idea of yin and yang, polar opposites. Of final note in the dark world is that it draws on a person's innermost feelings, desires, and secrets and transforms them into something based around that. For example, a person who changes their mind all the time, keeps bouncing off one idea to the other, would become a ball. So, when Link goes in there when he doesn't have a particular item that he needs to sustain his form, what does he become? He transforms into a bunny. A cute pink bunny. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. But that sad fact aside, it does show that he is a genuine, gentle, and caring person when he's not holding a sword. It also brings to light one of the most interesting themes of the game. In the light world of Hyrule, if a person doesn't want to make anything known about themselves, they can keep it a secret. They don't have to tell anybody. But in the dark world, since their likeness is transformed based on their innermost desires, it's almost impossible for them to keep a secret about themselves. Ergo, a person in this world can hide nothing in the light, but everything in the dark. In terms of music, it is just what you would expect. The game got better in both quantity 
and quality. It's almost as if they took everything that made the great tunes from the original two and amplified it a hundred times over. And of course, as if I hadn't praised his name enough already, it's all thanks to the genius of Koji Kondo. Every single tune in this game feels like it fits perfectly. In terms of breadth and versatility, the soundtrack is amazing and it set the standard for every game to follow. So what else can really be said about the game as a whole? Well, let me put it this way. If the original Legend of Zelda was the start of something great, then this was the highlight of the entire two-dimensional era. And if this had been the end of Zelda on the whole, I think it would have been a satisfying conclusion to what was, in all respects, a very successful and very fun franchise. I'm not saying that I wanted it to end here, I'm just saying that if it had ended, it would have been a respectable way to go out. Most certainly for Link and Zelda, as it has one of the happiest endings in the entire series. But with that being said, I have to say that I'm a little saddened. America would never again see a two-dimensional Zelda, even though uh, there was one other one in Japan, though it was only available on the Super Famicom Satellia series, which was a complete and utter flop in all respects. And so, here ends the two-dimensional Zelda franchise. But there is no reason to fear, my fellow Zelda fanatics, for while it was indeed the last 16-bit Zelda game to grace our shores, our patience was justly rewarded, and with the advent of Nintendo's new console, what better franchise to shadow their stuff with than the Zelda series? Why? 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 Oh, hey, look, a fairy. <laughs>